So like we've alluded to, Bitcoin conference, lots was said. What is your uh, take on it on this second slide here? Yeah, so let's talk about some of the key things that came out of this. It wasn't all Trump, uh, mm -hmm. though he was clearly front and center. Yeah. Um, the big takeaway from Trump was that we're going to diamond hands the crypto <laughs> yeah. that, uh, that the U.S. government holds, that it's um, recovered through various hacks and, and different C, uh, you know, the seizure of different assets, uh, yeah. Silk Road being one of them. And so I believe at current prices, there's about $13 billion worth of Bitcoin hmm. that the U.S. government holds. So this is over 200,000 individual coins or 200,000 Bitcoin. And the idea coming out of this conference is that this is the basis for possibly a strategic reserve. Uh, yeah. If anything, we're not going to sell that Bitcoin if Trump is president, at least that's what he said. And, you know, kind of focus, it, it kind of causes, I think, other governments to maybe shift their own policies yeah. as well. And you have this competitive strategic reserve in the same way that you have central banks mm -hmm. that acquire gold. You have countries that, that hold gold for a variety of reasons. And so that's probably, you know, in, in an environment where you have something that has is this asset has a degree of scarcity to it. Um, only 21 million will ever be mined. That's pretty bullish if we're sitting on a bunch of supply. Um, a couple other things that came out, you know, just the general sense that we want to move away from this idea that we're anti-crypto in the United States, that there's a war on crypto or there's a war on this technology. And so Trump is saying, look, I want us to be a global leader in the mm -hmm. crypto space. I want the U.S. to be a mining superpower, mm -hmm. I suppose. I'm going to get rid of Gary Gensler. Uh, <laughs> there's going to be a presidential advisory council. No more war on crypto again. So all things that on the surface for the industry are very, very bullish. Does that mean mm -hmm. that the price just rips higher and stays there? Not necessarily, but um, certainly a bullish tune mm -hmm. coming out of this conference from kind of what a potential policy uh, environment or, or real shift would look like. Um, you have also have people like uh, Robert Kennedy talking about a strategic reserve, um, Senator Cynthia Loomis talking about a strategic reserve. So just to give you guys a sense of some of the numbers there, right? So the, the U.S. government holds 200,000 Bitcoin right now. Um, RFK's proposal is to have a reserve of 4 million Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. uh, Cynthia Loomis's proposal is for us to amass a million Bitcoin um, mm -hmm. over you know, a, a certain period of time. So clearly this, you know, if there's a massive buyer in the market being the US government, I would assume that pulls in other governments as well. And uh, it's the exact opposite of you know, what we've seen at times with selling pressure. Uh, just a little while ago, we were talking about the German government dumping its Bitcoin mm -hmm. that it had seized. Um, and that was having, you know, at least a short term impact on price. There's a you know big seller in the market. This would obviously be the opposite of that. And so yeah. pretty bullish from that perspective. Um, you have other people like Michael Saylor. Um, he's obviously <laughs> yeah. bullish, right? Yeah, we, we could just eminent domain uh, uh, micro strategy, just have the government take it, you know, that'll right. be it. <laughs> he, um, he's calling for a uh, I don't know the exact market cap uh, estimate, but basically gets you to a Bitcoin price of 13 million for Bitcoin. Like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I love I love listening to him talk. He's like the the biggest bull. When he does this. <sighs> yeah. 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 Uh -huh. He um, he has a lot. Of, you know, he, he's he, he can articulate why. Obviously, he's very bullish and he puts his money where his mouth is. Um, but he's he's also a very good storyteller in, in that sense. Um, you know, a, a big proponent of crypto, of Bitcoin, uh, yeah. more so, excuse me, of Bitcoin. And so that's really the theme coming out of this. And I think the, the thing that stands out, and, and we knew this going into it, that there was going to be discussion around how do we approach this from a strategic perspective as the U.S. government, um, you know, where we have the reserve currency, do we need to think about Bitcoin a bit differently from that per strategic perspective? Should we have a reserve? And then I think the other thing to consider is if that does happen, and I'm not saying that that's going to happen, um, and I don't think it would be anything that would happen immediately, but if that's the direction that we go in, you would... I think anticipate other governments doing the yeah. same thing. And even today, when you scan the headlines, you're seeing a shift where countries like Qatar um, going from banning Bitcoin to developing a regulatory framework, yeah. Hong Kong looking at, should we have a strategic reserve? And these are just individual members at, at times of different councils saying things, 
but a complete shift from where we were a couple of years ago, and, and certainly a move away from uh, you know the perception that we're anti-crypto in this company, which, if you're an investor in Bitcoin, um, is a positive thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I see zero chance the, the U.S.